Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, we're going to do the ultimate Arduino code. This a bit of hyperbole, but this may be the, the last Arduino code you'll ever need, at least for inputs. So we're just dealing with inputs here. Okay, and so as a way by way of introduction, what we're going to do is we're going to start with just a simple sensor. So we're going to start with a button first, or one version of a simple sensor. We're going to start with one button, uh, and then show you how to sort of just get some output to the serial um, serial monitor on that and then we'll show you how to have as many buttons as you need and how to kind of do that in a simple code uh, one bit of code that you can just reuse and then we'll move on to pots and we'll move on to potentially FSRs okay uh, and uh, yeah so it could potentially be the last Arduino code you ever need to set up uh, a few little tricks and bits I think there's a lot to learn here and I hope you enjoy this so this will be the part one we are simply gonna just get a button a single button working Okay, uh, I don't have my camera on right now, but I have a kind of fancy rig here. It looks like a little Arduino mixer, but that's fine. I'm just going to use the one button. If you need to, um, if you haven't made a hooked up a button yet, and you need to do that, just go to my. There's a video there. My um, my this playlist here. If you go to this playlist called Ultimate Arduino Patch, the last Arduino code you ever need then you'll see this Arduino button tutorial. And uh, we're gonna redo some of the code that's in there, so you can just watch the construction part there. Okay, so let's get started. So basically the idea is we want a simple button and we want output to the serial uh, monitor. Okay, we want a serial output, basically some data that goes out our serial port. So, uh, you know, just a real quick uh, refresher, basically, um, you know, Arduino standalone, there's a processor on the Arduino chip. And when you plug it into USB, it goes through the serial port, so we can, it, you know, it's firmware, uh, the the software stays on the, the Arduino board, the chip itself. Uh, once you load it up, you don't have to do it again. So you can just plug your thing into a computer. And it's and it, as far as we're concerned, when you print to the serial monitor, you're giving you know output from your Arduino board actually into your computer through the USB through the serial based USB uh, uh, USB based serial port. Okay, so that's what we want. And then I'll show you maybe in a later date. Uh, uh, actually, a later series, how what what we can do with the, that information in, say, Super Collider, or doing audio stuff. But this can be used in you know any kind of application uh, you want, as long as you get can read data from the serial port. Okay, so that's our ultimate goal: is just to set up a thing, a code, that will allow us to use multiple sensors and change the number of sensors and do different things, and will output some kind of um, you know uh, some kind of uh, ordered output to the serial monitor, okay? So let's start with simply the, to give you the grand lines of what we're gonna do, is the way the buttons are set up, again, if you, you have, uh, if you don't understand this part, just go ahead and look at my button tutorial. But the way it's set up is that you have uh, just a simple button, and it's connected from, uh, one end of it is connected to ground, and the other end is connected to a digital input, all right? So what we're gonna do is initially we're gonna we're going to use the internal resistors on the Arduino and we're going to pull them high and so when you ground those when you ground that when you push the button and attach that uh, that input to high uh, to ground it goes low okay so that that way you don't have uh, you know you don't have to use a voltage input you don't have to use anything it's just two simple inputs one goes to ground one end of your button goes to ground the other end goes to a digital uh, input Okay, so let's go ahead and define the pin we want to do this, and I believe my pin is at uh, pin digital input number two. I believe that's the one I start. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go make an int here, and I'm going to say uh, pin, uh, what is called BP for button pin, and we'll just say equals two. Okay, and then um, we're going to set up our serial serial bus. So we're going to go serial dot begin, okay, and we'll have to declare a baud rate as an argument, 9600, okay. Now in this setup, this is the time where we're going to go ahead and uh, set up our thing. We're going to pull it high, okay. I'm just going to look, kind of cheat, look here. So basically, we're going to go to pin mode, use the command pin mode, okay. And the first argument it takes is the button, the pin number. So that's BP which is two, as you can see up there. And then in all caps, we're gonna go input underscore pull up, all right? Okay, so that will make that pin number two, It'll this pin mode command will make pin number two an input pin, it'll set it as an input, and it'll pull up the internal resistor so that it's just registering as high, okay? 
So then, uh, sorry, this is in setup. Forgive me. This is meant to be here in setup. And if you're not familiar, if you do the handy command or can Apple T, it will indent everything nicely for you. Okay, the IDE. Okay, so then in the loop, what we're going to do is simply just print out what our pin mode is. Okay, so let's have a value. We'll have a int. Uh, let's have an int. Take it off caps lock, and we'll have um, button val. Say for example, bval. Okay, we'll just declare it there. All right, and so when it runs there, we're going to use the command. At, uh, sorry, we're going to use the command. Uh, digital read, right? So we're going to go digital read. Okay, and I believe that's just simply uh, it's simply the button number, the pin number. Okay, we're going to read pin two, right? That's where our button is connected to. Okay, and that's just going to be low or high. Okay, so let's go bval equals digital read pin number bp. I'm sorry, not two. We're going to go bp. So we use variables there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's let's go ahead and read that. Right now, so let's go ahead and put a delay in so that doesn't gum up our serial port. So we're going to put a delay. I can make it quite small if you want. Um, say, thirty milliseconds, for example. Okay, and we'll print out that bow. We'll just do it step by step. We'll print out that B uh, val. I put val, but I meant to put B val. So we'll say serial dot print and it'll be bval. Okay. So if we go ahead and save that and if we loaded it, oh yeah, and so if you're not familiar, I believe there's a at all with Arduino. I do believe I have an intro to Arduino kind of uh, videos. So there's a couple of videos floating out there. Just check my um, my page. But we want to make sure we have the right board. I'm using a uh, Pro Micro 3.3 volt. And then we want to make sure we have the right port chosen. So we'll choose that one, I believe. Okay. And if I go ahead and try to upload that to my board and see what happens. There it goes. Okay. And I see the lights flashing on my Arduino. And it's fine. Now we should be able to have this just print. Okay. One. And then if I push my button, it should be the zero, right? So it's kind of uh, counterintuitive a little bit because since we pulled up high, high is its natural state, the button not not grounded, not pushed, and zero then would be the button pushed, okay, right? So that's high or low, okay? And uh, it might be handier to do print line so it's not just all in a row. Okay, so, but we're going to change this anyways. Now, what we want to do is um, we're going to have um, it print, we're going to do a little, a little thing. So we're going to read this here in the loop, okay? Let me just double check to make sure that's what we're doing. We're reading in the loop. There's sometimes more efficient ways to do things, but I believe that's the most efficient way. So we're going to go ahead and read in the loop. Yeah. So we're going to read in the loop. Okay. Uh, and instead of saying uh, the assigning it to a value, we're going to just use an if statement here. So we want to know if it's high or low. step then is to make an if statement to see whether it's high or low. Okay, so just uh, bear with me here. If, then we can say the condition will be if digital read of the button pin is equal to low or high, that means off, right? Not pushed. So you can use say caps, H, I, G, H, if it's equal to high. Okay, and don't forget to use the two equal signs, being is equal to, um, one equal sign is assigned to. Okay, so if the digital pit, a digital read that equals high for reading our pin and it equals high, then something happens. Okay, and then um, we can just use an else because really it's binary, right? It's just high or low. So we can use an else. So if it's not high, which means it's got to be low, then we're going to do this. Whatever's in those curly brackets. Okay, so let's get rid of that. We can probably just copy that. Well. Uh, let's get rid of that. We'll retype. Okay, and then we have our delay. All right, so why don't we just do a simple serial print now? So if it's high, that means if it's off, remember it's counterintuitive, then we'll serial dot print 
line, println, so it's one after another. And we're just going to print the number 0. Okay, So that's going to go out. Otherwise, we're going to serial print line uh, the number 1. Okay, So if it's pushed, it's 1. If it's not pushed, it's 0. So let's go ahead and upload that. Okay, and then open up our serial monitor. That was successful. And zero, say so I'm not pushing the button, and once I push the button, it's one. The same result as we had before, but now we're being a little bit more specific about whether it's being pushed or not being pushed. Okay, now we have that. All right, so that's pretty good, actually. We could probably end there and consider that a success. We have input from our button, and we're going out to the serial monitor. All right, um, but one uh, one more thing I want to do, which is very useful in applications and other things, is you want to be able to identify your various sensors that are coming in. All right, so uh, we're going to instead of doing that, we're also going to print out of just printing one or zero, we're going to put print out an identifier. All right, so let's go ahead and put serial dot print. Now print again, as you saw before. Will, won't give you that hard return. It won't print out a line. Print ln will give you a line. Print won't, so you can have things you know, basically smushed up against each other. So let's print out a little header, a little string here, and we'll just call it B0, okay, to identify our button. And we'll have a little colon there, and put all that in a string. A colon will be helpful later on if we want to parse things, but that you'll see much later on. So now this is going to be B0, and then it's going to be the value of 0. Okay, so let's just copy that, the B0, the header. I'm going to call those headers from now on. A little header for our button. Okay, save. We're going to upload. And then, you know, the results are obvious. We'll have the same kind of thing, but now we'll have an identifier. Now, B0 is, has the value of 0, but when I push it, B0 has the value of 1. Okay, great. That's some good progress there. Okay, so maybe we'll call this part A. We'll that's good progress. Let's go ahead and be super organized since I'm claiming, making such high claims about being the ultimate uh, thing. We'll call this part A, and we'll call this simple button serial output. Simple button serial out. Okay. Now let's save this as something else now. We're going to call this part B, and we'll call it um, B. Single button, maybe not simple. And it's going to be um, uh, gates. Okay. All right, so what do I mean by gates? Well, uh, you notice that when we have our ser serial monitor on, I have a hard time with that word, serial. Something with my, the shape of my mouth, anyways. Serial monitor on, uh, it just keeps outputting stuff. Now, this is fine, it's not a problem, but Sometimes when we're using loads of sensors and stuff and we're trying to send it, say, over the network to uh, some kind of, for example, in the work I do, sound making device uh, or some kind of synthesis, it's not handy to have these continuous outputs. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to simply have it, if we push it, if it, it's going to register once when we push it down and it's going to register once when we let it go. All right, So we'll only get one zero and one one until we push it again. All right, And I think that's a little bit handier. All right. So how do we do that? It's it's there's a couple steps to it. It seems like it should be easier. And maybe if one of you has an easier way, I'd love to know. Put it in the comments. But um, the way I do it is I create a little boolean gate. All right. So what I do is I have a gate, and it says only if, if the gate is open can you let this through. And then the opposite for the other side. But uh, easier to show than to explain. So let me make a boolean value for our button, and we're going to call it B, B gate. Okay, we'll call it B gate. And we'll make its initial value, um, we'll make its initial value uh, true, open. Okay, I guess it doesn't matter just as long as we do it right. All right, now, uh, let me just make sure we have the order right. Okay, yeah, we do have the order right. Okay, so now within this, now you see this is uh, conscribed or whatever, conscripted, conscribed, whatever you want to call it, by these two curly brackets, right? So everything within those two curly brackets here is in this if statement. So all this code in here will only run if the digital read is high. Okay, so within that, we're going to put a nested if statement. 
if digital read high and if the B gate is open, it's true. Now with uh, true false, if is looking for a Boolean, and since this is either true or false, you don't have to say B gate is equal to true, you know, or B gate equal equal true. You can just put if B gate. So if B gate is true, then we will do that. We'll print out that, okay? And but within the gate, so it passes that gate, and once it passes that gate, we'll just make it false right away. Okay, so then B gate equals false. Okay, so let's let's step through the workflow. Forgive me if I'm being too slow and stuff. You can fast forward through some of this stuff if you're well well aware of these things. But I'm going to try to be slow for for those of you who aren't super familiar with this stuff. Uh, so the workflow is here. Every loop, so it's doing it every 30 milliseconds, and you can control that. You know, so it's a really quick loop. It just keeps going through this every 30 milliseconds. You know, so it's what is that, like 300 times a second or something like that? Anyways, 30 times a second, 30 times a second maybe. Yeah, anyways, whatever. Uh, so it's going to come in the loop. It's going to see if the thing is high. So that means it's, it's not being touched if it's off, all right? And then it's going to see if the B gate is true. So if it's B gate true, then it's going to get to this point, and then it'll run all this code in here. So even though we're making it false, it's already gotten through the gate, right? So then it'll be turned false for the next time, the next loop. Right, and then it'll go ahead and print out what we expected to do. And then it then it passes that. Okay, and then it goes through, and if it if it's still off, if we haven't pushed the button yet, it'll come through, and then it's still high. Yep, but the B gate now is false, so then it won't do this. So it'll only do it the one time. It'll just skip this whole all the all the stuff in that curly brackets. Right? Okay. So let's well you know just to be super like detailed, not to be like pedantic or anything, but super detailed. We'll just see what happens. Okay. So remember the initial state is true, so it's gonna gonna let, give me one value at least, and it doesn't give me anything because it already did it before I could push it, right? So it's only giving me the one. But when I let it go, it came through at some point, maybe before I turned the serial monitor on, and then it read false. But that's good. That's what we want. Okay. But then we want on the other side now we want to be able to do it more than once, right? So on the other side we're going to do the same thing except we're just going to invert it all. Okay? So this else is just like this if, right? See the curly bracket goes to here and then the else follows it. So it's else to this big if, this digital read high, which means if it's not that otherwise, right? So else meaning since it's binary, there's only pushed on or pushed off, right? Or let go. Else means it's pushed, right? And we can even put a little comment button pushed. Okay. Now, uh, then the else here will be the same thing. We're going to have the B gate here. We're going to go ahead and copy that if B gate. And we're going to put it nested within this else, right? But don't forget to put the closing bracket there nested within that else as well. So this else is the two outer brackets, and then this if is within. And instead, we're going to say if B gate is false, we're going to do the exact opposite of this. All right. So in order, a shorthand for that is just exclamation point B gate, which means if B gate is false, we're going to do the same thing except we're going to make it true equals true. All right. So this is this gate system. And I'll probably only explain this in this detail once. We're going to use it several times, and I'll probably just kind of jam through it. So, uh, but I'll give you fair warning to come back to look at this part, hopefully, if I remember. All right. Um, so, in other words, let's do the workflow. If it's pushed, yes, it's gotten through here. If B gate is false, well, we made it false here. Then it gets through. It's going to turn it true, and then it's going to print out this. Now, the next time it comes through, if we're handed still on the button, it's going to skip this because it's not high, right? It's low. It's going to come through here, but B gate is true now, so it won't get through here, so it won't do it again until I let go. Once I let go of it, it will be high again, and the B gate will be true, and it's going to do that, but then it turns it false. You see? So only you get one printout per button push, all right? It's probably easier seen than understood, but uh, if you're not getting that, just rewind a little bit and think through it a little bit. It's not, not super complicated. All right, so if I push the button, I get one, but see, I'm holding the button down. It's not giving me the continuous output. It's a lot, a lot cleaner, smoother, and you don't get sort of a data dump. If you're using several sensors, you know, if you're using 100 buttons, you don't want 100 things coming every 30 milliseconds, right? And if I let go, it goes zero, but it doesn't keep putting out zero. If I push one, I let go of zero. I push one, let go of zero. Okay, that is perfect. That's exactly what we want. All right, it's exactly what we want. Uh, momentary gate thing. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that now, and I think I'll just end this tutorial here because I think we've gotten to a good stopping point. There's a lot more to go. But basically, this is the basic framework for a lot of what we're going to do in the sensors. We're going to do slight variations of that. Basically, we want to get, uh, in review, we want to get some kind of sensor input, and we want to get uh, uh, the input, the sensor, basically to give me data through the serial port. So that can be used in other applications, other things. So that's what the serial print. We, are, we introduce this gate, which we're going to use for pretty much all the data. And so for our button, we have this gate, so it only lets in out one piece of data every time I push it and one piece of data every time I let go. And in this case, when I pushed, it's one, and when I let go, it's zero. So, oh yeah, the, I forgot the part about using a header. So we have these headers to identify, uniquely identify each of our sensors, okay? Um, so let me stop that here. The next part, part two, we're gonna get more than one type of data from our buttons. We're gonna do um, a different type of data and show you how to get multiple types of data from a single input. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that.